you know, that just leads me to a question. Uh, last year, you took obviously a major step. I think part of it was the development of the change-up that you brought in uh, last year and just the experience that you had uh, in going from two years ago to the Cy Young. In going from last year to this year, it, is there one or two things, are there one or two things that, uh, uh, that, that maybe you had that you didn't have last year uh, that have helped you sort of uh, either maintain it or take it to another level? Uh, you know, I think I've been just, I mean, with the exception of last night, you know, a couple, and a couple of starts, I think. I think I've been just commanding my fastball better. You know, I haven't been trying to throw, you know, my, you know, 95 by everybody, you know, every pitch. I've been trying to, you know, pitch, hit my spots. It doesn't matter how, you know, everyone always says it's not how hard it's thrown. It's position, it's where it's, where it's thrown at. So, uh, you know, just trying to work on that. You know, and it also changes. It, it also changes the per, uh, perspective for the hitter. I mean, if he's throwing two different fastballs, that's two different pitches. You know, and you throw them at different speeds and in different spots, it makes it even that much tougher. How, how hard is it to add and subtract? I mean, w when you're throwing a fastball, how hard is it to add and subtract? Uh, I don't think it, it's it's not that hard. I mean, it, without obviously slowing up your body, but I think I got a pretty good, I mean, a pretty good idea of what I'm doing with my arm as far as arm speed goes and just keeping it going but not necessarily putting the you know the last snap on the ball you know mm -hmm. all right on that note we need to take a time out but plenty more ahead want to get your thoughts on the Giants contending and also uh, your relationship with your dad he was actually on Chronicle Live a few weeks ago plenty more with Tim Lentz to come after the break just a rocket ship ride. Uh, I'm proud of both my sons, you know. I'm, I'm just glad to see him uh, safe and healthy, but for what he's done with his will and uh, his competitiveness and how tough he is on the field, I'm, I'm really proud of him. There's a lot of guys out there that could have had it, and uh, we've talked about that, and, and uh, he just took it to a different level, and oh, I'm extremely proud, you know. I mean, what can I say? You know, it's, I mean, it's enjoyable, it's tough on him, it's, it's a lot of work, and I get to reap a little bit of the benefits. Chris Litzel come join us here on Chronicle Live just before Father's Day. And, uh, boy, your dad couldn't be prouder. I'm, I'm guessing that uh, that relationship has meant a lot to you. I know he was instrumental in developing you into the pitcher you are today. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I said it time and time again, he's, uh, he's, the major, he's the biggest influence on why, you know, I'm where I'm at and, uh, you know, my progression as a pitcher and as a, uh, as a teammate. You know, he, he's the one that taught me to play the way I did and, you know, be the teammate the way that I have been. So. It's funny because I asked you in the break, I said, how much do you talk to your dad still? And you said, probably not as much as he would like. And I think he actually said that in the interview. And I joked, hey, parents never get enough phone calls. But uh, but you still talk to him quite a bit. Yeah, definitely. He's actually uh, going to be coming into town tonight. So, Which will be a thrill. Yeah. But it, why, why why tonight? He didn't get to he, he, uh, see your pitch last night. He still has to work, man. He still yeah. has to work. Well, that's uh, he's still working at Boeing after all yes. these years. How tough was it for you to grasp when you were young what he was trying to teach you? Because, I mean, the mechanics that he taught you are really different than the mechanics from most everybody else in baseball. Uh, you know, but, but, that, but back then, you know, when he's teaching me that, that, that's what I knew. That's what, you know, I wasn't hearing other mechanics when I was a six-year-old, you know, from a lot of parents. You know, it was what my dad wanted to put in my head, and he plugged it in at a young age. So, uh, you know, that, and I also, you know, my brother was like three and a half, four, almost four years older than me. He, uh, you know, he was learning the same mechanics, so I was kind of mimicking him from even like a younger age. You know, there's a great commercial, and you know which one it is, that's on MLB, uh, and uh, it shows uh, home movies that were actually taken of uh, you and your dad when uh, you had no hair at all, <laughs> uh, almost, and uh, I, there's a younger Chris Lincecum, and there's a shot of you, uh, it's, it, 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 it's almost like you're throwing off flat ground, but I'm sure it's like a little Little League mound, yeah. and it's like the exact same mechanics, just about, at least to the naked eye, that we saw when you first came up to spring training that first year. Um, how, how similar are the mechanics? Well, first of all, when was that shot taken? How old were you? And how similar are those mechanics? How many changes do you think you've made since then? I think I was like either 12 or 13 at that age. Uh, I was taken to Nizakal, Washington. But uh, you know, as the progression of my mechanics have come, that was... You know, that was back when it was more like one, two, three, four, you know, I was like just doing what my dad was saying, you know, but, you know, I've gotten to the age, you know, and, and as time has gone on, obviously, with uh, 
with these mechanics that I it, they've become more second nature. I can feel the difference. I don't necessarily have to count it out. Mm -hmm. You know, one one interesting thing about your dad I wanted to bring up. I mean, your dad uh, is happy to talk to the media um, mainly because we call him all the time yeah. because he was such a big part of your life, and that has kind of led to some people kind of rolling their eyes and going, oh, you know, there, another Williams, uh, you know, like the Richard Venus, Williams, uh, yeah, yeah, Richard Williams or uh, Marv Marinovich. But the thing people don't understand is that your dad is is almost never around. I mean, he makes visits, but he doesn't hover over you uh, yeah. like he said like he told us from the beginning uh, you know he, he he still needs to make a living he still needs to go to that big Boeing factory up in Seattle uh, five days a week um, you know do you think that there's a right balance between your your dad and you in in how much you actually do interact and still talk about baseball uh, and the like yeah definitely I mean uh you know, I wish I wish he could be there closer. I mean, he was a big, he he was a big reason why I went. You know, I stayed. Uh, you know, at UW. I mean, you just. You know, I still needed. I felt like I needed to. Ha you know, have his some of his guidance in there, and you know, back up whenever I needed it. So, uh, you know, that relationship kind of just grew. Like I said, as I went through college, and you know, it's a little different not having him there, but it's, a, it's also kind of breaking away and just growing up and you know, discovering myself a little bit better. But uh, you know, obviously, I can see that's tough on him, but. You know, we, I think we still do keep that healthy balance of, you know, he, of, you know, when I when I can talk to him, and he's understanding me better, and you know, more and more as 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 uh, as the time goes on. So. And you know, Henry, you mentioned the job at the Boeing factory. I, I want to put some numbers up. Uh, take a look at the numbers we put together. This list of the last three years worth of Cy Young Award winners, and uh, in the right column is their salaries. And uh, I don't know, I'm seeing a little discrepancy there, Tim. I don't know if you see a discrepancy there or not. What is the latest on your situation in terms of a contract extension? And, uh, you know, is that something that you're looking forward to getting out of the way and wrapping up a long-term future and getting some security for you and your entire family? Yeah, I mean, I'm, more, I'm worrying about it when, when the time comes. I mean, it hasn't even been a factor yet. I haven't, I haven't really been... You know, hearing anything from my agent, and he's the he's the guy that gives me the heads up. So uh, until then, I'm just gonna just continue to just play ball and have fun, and and do it at a high level. And you're having yeah. a, a lot of fun. And that's another thing I want to ask you. When you're even when you're not pitching, the shots of you in the dugout, you're there cheering for the team. Uh, uh, you really bleed for your team, and and that's very evident. That's just a who you are. I'm guessing. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I I, I don't know. I just. Uh, you know, growing up and being a part of a lot of sports, you develop relationships with people and you want to pull for them as much as uh, as the next guy. I mean, like, uh, you know, their success means as much to you as, not, I mean, not, maybe not as much to them as it does to you, but pretty dang close. You know, speaking of the time between starts, um, I, I don't think the average fan realizes that there's a process, there's something you do every single day um, between starts, whether it's this particular uh, workout regimen or whether it's throwing your bullpen. But I'm, I've always wondered what it's like for a starter uh, to come in the day after he starts, particularly after a loss, and, and knowing that it's going to be uh, four, maybe if there's an off day, five days before you can get back on the mound. Is that a rough day for you when you walk in that second day at, or the first day after the start? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think it's uh, it's rough, you know, with, with a win, whether, whether with a win or a loss. I mean, just because you're like, dang, I got to wait now four days or five days till I get out there again. But, uh, you know, I definitely, I mean, I understand how it goes after losses. I mean, just, uh, you know, it wears on you and it's obviously going to wear on you that night before. But, you know, it's, it's one of those things where people at this level kind of move on from that you know that failure you know a little bit quicker and you know can make that progression to get better they're not worrying about it they're just letting it go you know uh, yeah Cy Young won 511 games but he pitched every other day <laughs> do you think if you went back like a hundred years you could kind of live and, and be in that kind of baseball would you enjoy that I don't know. I have no idea if I would have been able to do that. <laughs> well, and the rough time between starts for him is you don't get to eat a Choco Taco every day, or maybe you do. Yeah, it's not every clubhouse has a Choco Taco. Not, not Where did that come from? I don't know. I just, uh, I was, <laughs> I remember as the ice cream truck used to come down our street, that was one of the ones I got. Uh, the two, I forget what the other one was called. It was like a rock, it was like a red, red, white, and blue rocket. Rocket pop. Yeah, rocket pop. And then uh, the Choco Taco, those are my two favorite. I'd get those all the time. Right. Listen, I want to take one more break. Can you stick around for one more segment? Sure. All right, cool. We're going to take one more break. And when we come back, one final segment with Tim Lincecum. Stick around. More on Chronicle Live.